Shivo Ham Shivo Ham Shiva Swa
So, Namaste, welcome everyone to Satsang this morning. Uh, and those of you who will watch this later by via broadcasting somehow, uh, welcome and uh, good. Enjoy. I felt strongly to speak to you today, and um, I was trying to pinpoint it so I could speak. Um, I could be articulate with my words, but I couldn't quite really get to the point. But it was more about just exposing that uh, still plays here this sense of um, pleasing others a lot, or, and, and then with that comes a strong sense of like needing to do stuff and maybe at the expense of kind of what really needs to happen in here or, or listening more inwardly and I also see there's pride with this as well and like the pride will come from where if one is trying to or you observe that there is a tendency inside that um, excessive to try and please other people hmm? because to please someone is not sin no? but to be afraid that you might displease them creates trouble um, when truth sometimes is sacrificed for uh, a kind of false comfort so it is good you chose to step forward and say I want to expose this um, it's it's uh, it's the beginning, and could be the beginning of the end of something. You want to expose it. Um, observing is very important thing, and observing with detachment, and not with identity, because this thing will continue, because of identity. We identify with that characteristics or that trait, and so it will perpetuate it. It is like voting for it when you identify with it. Now the identification may have started earlier and has now just become a kind of reflex. So as soon as you know this tendency, and many of us know it, of course, no? uh, a fear of uh, disappointment, a fear that someone will, you know. Uh, Dismiss you or fear of confrontation also. So we don't know where it starts. We are not here to blame, but to look. And if these energies come up, we notice them. Why? Because you are a feeling being. It is not wrong that we feel something. And what you feel may be partially true. That uh, we tend to sometimes attract situations and people and contact that will bring up this feeling of expectation in us. And then uh, we try to too much to please. And what is the outcome of that? Your words are weak. Your presence are weak. You are not coming from your strength, but coming from weakness. You see, not blame, but we start there. And uh, there has to be some detachment when these things flare up inside. That uh, as soon as you can. Uh, don't try to stop them. It doesn't really work, just to try and stop. Because you are trying to stop it, is already your involvement with it. And funny enough, you are trying to stop it, gives it strength. Because by trying to stop it, you perceive it really as an enemy, and then it feeds on friction. You see? So let it play, and then you are observing this thing. Don't be quick to take shape with it. Your observing already begins, also even before it's personal, the impersonal is there, and begin to begin to observe this thing inside. 
don't claim it as yours so quickly. You see? Because the minute you say, Yeah, oh you know, I can, you know, I don't want to feel like this and I'm you know, again or whatever, in your own silent way, apparently, you're already in a struggle with yourself, you see. Can these habits be changed? Oh yes, they can change. They can change. They're only there when they're there. Otherwise, they're there in, you may say, dormant. And the more they're not dealt with, it's as though situations keep coming that will provoke this kind of thing. You see. Now you said you 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 listen. Did you say you listen or you look? What did you say? When they when they come. Um, to be honest. Uh, there hasn't been, like I'm just almost rediscovering inquiry again. It feels, you know, going back to the roots because mm-hmm. something has become complacent or somehow forgot even just the basics. Um, but I, yeah, just just with my words today, I was trying to locate kind of what actually the question was. There was mm-hmm. a feeling, but. Mm-hmm. Um, you started well enough by identifying that there's a tendency to please, no? mm. and it's good you, you put it straight, simple. You know, we notice this, and something inside you, you're, you're not pleased about it. We're not pleased because it's like compromise. You give someone the stronger voice, and the fear of, as I say, um, getting into this feeling that you know, unless you please, you will be read as being displeasing. Or something. So it's a habit that's going on. But the key is to to be free of these things is to observe that yes, it's a tendency. It's been going on for some time. But from the place, is there a place from which you are aware of it that you are observing it? But this place has no charge. It's not personal. Can you see this or not? See, everybody see it, but no one fully implies it. You see. Because somehow it doesn't seem as rich, as virile, as passionate as the stage when we are identified, and our attention tends to go there. The identity is strengthened in the place where we are really um, in this kind of situation, in that kind of duality. How to change it? You see. Actually, to be honest, this is not your biggest problem. That's just an offshoot. It's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is not that uh, I have a difficulty always trying to please people. What is the greater problem or misunderstanding? Is that you are living in the mode of a person only, mostly. Even sometimes our spirituality hasn't flowered yet. Around these things to burn them. That primarily uh, the, we are living in the mode of personhood. Once the personhood thing is um, uh, developed, becomes our convincing sense of ourselves, every other nonsense can come. So we can talk about this particular peculiarity and that one, but the root you must find, and the root is. This I am feeling, which is functioning primarily as a person. Now, this would sound, if I went out on the street somewhere and say these things, people would think, oh, What is he talking about? They would not understand, because very few human beings get the chance to begin to observe or to even doubt that the person is only a very limited, restricted sense of something infinitely greater than that. But here in satsang, I can say, I expect that you see this already. There are so many faces I see here. We have been seeing each other for some time. I am only sharing this. I am only pointing at this. I don't have a second subject. You see? So has it gone in or not? You see? Because we can stay here and be listening, and it's just floating over your head, waiting for when I catch your particular interest at the moment. But this is at the root of it. This is the, the master medicine. This is the one medicine for everything, actually. 
because all troubles begin with person and ego. So after that, if you don't catch that, then we start to then came all the people, all the psychotherapists and the psychoanalysts and the, the magicians and all the different people start to come because you didn't catch the root of it. You follow or not? Yes. That if you don't catch it, then we start, it, the mind just goes into all these different uh, spaces. And you think, well, it's you know, this thing. I need, I need some yoga. I need some reiki. I need prayers. I need this. I need that. I need this. But it's the same one root, the same one tree, and the tree is the tree where the I am is confused to be the person only. And we are living life too personally. The person is meant to be something superficial. While we are in this body and experiencing through this body, as consciousness. It's superficial, but it became the governor, the landlord of the house. How is this going to be changed? How can we speak now, today, where something is changed? Go for the biggie. Don't go to fix a small, put a little band aid on it. But go for the big thing, so that if you catch the the root of it, then this and all potentially subsequent problems are you know you are at the very heart of them. You can see all of them. You take the sting out of them. They can be superficially contributing more and more to the widening of your wisdom, but they will not conquer you because you are not to be found there anymore. You have disappeared from there. So maybe uh, your thing is to really get back into the inquiry. The tablet was kept in the mouth; it has to be swallowed. How you can forget something which is the very bodyguard of your being? It is the door to your sanity. It is the mirror that you check in with yourself. Is this thing true? You see. How many is on board with what I'm speaking? You know? oh, thank you. Good, 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 good. What good fortune! What good fortune! Suppose you had some illness and I tell you there's no remedy for your illness. Suppose you go to a doctor and they tell you there's no remedy, nothing we can do for you. Even that is going to be good for you, actually, <laughs> at a deeper level. Even that, isn't it? But suppose something has been troubling you for a very, very long time, and it has not been discovered what it is, and then somehow you came to go, this is what it is. Yes. You only have to eat melon skins. <gasps> Would you not do it? Yeah, you would do it, no? Hmm? So if we say, ah, this pra- oh, don't worry, all you have to do is to stop identifying. Watch this I feeling when it comes up, because the I feeling comes up is not the problem. The problem is believing in it and taking it to be what you are. And the minute you have taken that, and then other troubles will come. And watch it and see what happens. It will not take you one week to really come to the root of what you are seeing. You can sort it out today even. If you were really supposing this day was all that was left, can I ask like this? You know, suppose this day is all that's left. Suppose wherever you come from, you won't have time to return there and say bye bye and all this. So right here, you have to start. Hmm? And you're in the perfect place, of satsang. Because if this is your last day, what other classes you have to go to? Hmm? I have to do my last yoga class. I've got to go and finish uh, my, you know, my flower making today. You know, I've got two cakes to make. What is going to be important for you? Hmm? What would you have to leave this room for? That's better than what you stand to find out here. 
Suppose your last day, how will you use your time? Crying. <laughs> how will you use your time? I got your attention? <laughs> and then this satsang can be, because each time I come to satsang, for me, it could be the last satsang. If you have this attitude, that kind of earnestness, I think a lot of things will change, and so much for better. No? Hmm? Nothing to carry over, no account for tomorrow, everything today. Is possible? What is possible? What would be possible? We don't even know. We don't know. Even if I said, "Don't know," it's possible. But your attention becomes so alert. You are so present. You are so present that past means nothing for you. Future means nothing for you. Right now. Just even just for a few seconds to grasp what that means experientially is to be in the elevation of yourself. Don't let it pass. Now my hope is not that you simply become tense. And if there is tension, then something can observe that tension. That is not what truly exists. A wave is triggered, a movement has come, but like everything else that you have seen, it comes and goes. Have you ever experienced anything that has come and stayed? Have we ever experienced anything that has come and remained with you? Any thought, any feeling, even the most delicious feeling, come and go. Why do they go? Even you don't want them to go. They seem to go even more quick. So what has stayed? What has not gone? You have not gone. You are the witness of what comes and what goes. But I'm not talking about you personally. The person also come and go. And is there really a person that come and go? Or is it just a personal feeling, a personal thought come and go? What is it that remain that if even didn't come? Have you heard me speak like this too much to take me seriously anymore? It's only a mirror. It's only only mirror. Mirror means you, I'm not teaching you something. The mirror is not giving you even an opinion. You go look in the mirror and go. And the mirror says, mm -mm, not today. No, that didn't come from the mirror. That came from your mind. Okay? So it is just this. We are just looking. And not just looking and interpreting through the mind, but looking and even watching the mind behavior also. If you don't understand my words at the moment, it's okay. Be in the vibration of them. There is truth even in the vibration of them. Sometimes, when we come to moments like this, where something really could be revealed in you that is very important, resistance comes. The, f the, f the force of distractedness comes. Somebody here is thinking, thinking about pizzas right now. <laughs> Somebody here is thinking about, yes, I need to send an email and oh, that dress, that dress, those red shoes. It will come now. 
these kind of thoughts will come. Why? Because there is force within ourselves that tends to function to keep as though keep your attention only upon your bodily existence and uh, superficial mental preoccupations. And there's a power in you that is open to evolve, to go more deeply, you can say, to come home to the truth of yourself. That power is there. God put it there. And between these two movements, there is the unmoving, from where the observing of both polarities are seen. What I am speaking with you should not take so much time, except that it has to go to the mind barrier sometimes, because something is, uh, feels uncomfortable about it. You must discern whether anything, any resistance, is in promotion or support to your freedom or not. So I am pulling in the question you brought, and every other questions which are similar is is really being dealt with, or will be dealt with, not by force, but by a little focus. If you have not fully grasped it, and you come to satsang, for sure there will be forces trying to pull your attention away from that. It is life. It is like that. And this amounts to a kind of a delay of your self-discovering. We are postponing all the time, because of mind, tomorrow. Like dieting, you know. Best time is tomorrow, starting. Same way mind will put it off, you know. Yeah. I will give more time tomorrow on this, later, when I am by myself. And so on. Have you get, gotten anything from what I say, Joy? I would really encourage that you, because actually this thing we refer to as self-inquiry, it's very simple, actually. What is complex is your mind. The pointing that the mirror, mirror. I mean, what does a mirror do? What does a mirror do? Again, a mirror be working over time. What does it do? It only reflects. It's not even reflecting. By its very nature, it is reflecting. Your place is to observe that and uh, and use it to discern whether your feelings are in service to truth, whether your feelings are true or not. And like this, we can cut through a lot of this seeming traffic very quickly. Sometimes you don't even have to touch them. If you remember where you really are, you don't have to go and be no traffic policeman in anywhere. This simply, simply remembering and recognizing your true place, and these things they drop away immediately, a testimony to their falsehood and their superficiality. Can I leave it like this for the moment? Yeah, and uh, uh, there's some food in there, I think. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next one. <laughs> you, you. Can I see you for a minute? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Such a joy, Guruji, to, to to more and more see that everything that can come, like that, it's a dream, like the being (coughs) 
And my, when I went home to my parents, suddenly a very different identity feeling was there, and it was so clear. It's a dream. I can see uh, it. That feeling came up in you uh, uh, regarding your own yes. self and your own behavior. Yes. Uh, is it okay? Role play, like a role game, yes. maybe? Okay. And <coughs> it was the most beautiful thing because I could sense that this one would just create so much problems, like mm -hmm. judging parents, whatever. And so the relationship with the parents has become so beautiful now. Mm -hmm. and and it's for everything, and um, mm, and it feels sometimes like it's not seen that it's not me, and then it's still causing suffering, like being in the kitchen and kind of rushing, wanting to impress. But as soon as it's seen, it's such a joy, and I'm so grateful that. I feel you're really saving this life, because uh, mm -hmm. it's... Uh, Honor that recognition, and, and stay with it. Don't let it just be a flash. Yeah. Hmm? When you have a little time, sit with it a little bit, and be confirmed in your seeing, you know? Because there's a tendency for the man to go, Wow, wow, so thank you, thank you, thank you. You know? Uh, uh, Quick fix, but not really. Mm. You see, so so, it's it's good that we honor this. You understand what I mean when I say this thing? <coughs> because you're not simply looking for relief; you're looking for release. You understand? So not just a momentary. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah. But actually, why has that change happened? Because, uh, for a moment, in a way, it is as though you are absent from yourself. And so we are in some kind of state, which can look like you are know, there, but actually you are not really present as yourself. So in that moment, it came to you again. You are sort of, you know. And so immediately something falls away. It cannot cling. Somehow, in that seeing, it falls away. It loses any power in your seeing. This is a testimony to the power of your seeing. You see? mm -hmm. and, um, if I ask myself what needs to be done still, I feel like, um, for instance, to you, I feel still like there's a lot of times fear playing, and it keeps me awkward around you, and not mm. really being able to express. What is the fear about? Yes, um, I, of, I think of doing something wrong, of being like told. And really? I, yeah. <laughs> I want to know. Am I walking around with a stick, beating people around this place, or what is it that you're afraid? Yeah. Uh, there is some healthy distance. Is good. Hmm? Maybe you know it's like this. It's good, no? Uh, so, um, but uh, mind creates this. What? Why? Where the fear comes from? Because something feels uh, the more you are in a satsang environment, your mind cannot distract you in quite. It doesn't have quite the same freedom as when you are with people who are always distracted. It is like a thief in a glass house. You have nowhere to hide under the bed. It's a glass bed, <laughs> so you cannot hide. So of course, it comes of some discomfort. But don't identify that as you. Discomfort come, discomfort go. Comfort come, comfort go also. Don't tie yourself even to comfort. Be in this neutral place. The space in which these things come and, and go. If you don't tie yourself or combine with any feeling, then you are free of them. If you are someone who loves the sun, oh, when the sun comes, oh, you are Mary Poppins. You are very, very happy floating around. Okay? Then what happens when winter comes? <laughs> Suppose you live in England or someplace. 
and you are in love with the sun, uh, you're going to be happy for 365 days a year? I don't think so. So why not just let everything find a place which is already there? You don't have to make neutral. You can discover that. And with that, in neutrality, everything is appreciated for its... Everything has a beauty, even ugly things. The wise person can see a richness even in ugly things, even in painful things. They find some, they find some gem. They find something. But if you start to prefer, you set up one thing against another thing, and you will suffer. This is what I'm speaking. Mm, the last thing I didn't really hear. <laughs> can, like... I can know. I know. Okay. <laughs> you forced me to repeat things because <laughs> your mind came in and went. Mm. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, sorry, Guruji. What did you say? <laughs> I said toast. <laughs> what have to say? It's very easy to f- these waves of distractedness come. Why? Even that should show you something. If I was talking with any other kind of thing, some foolish thing, I would not be distracted so easy. But the thing that really could matter, then ah, oh, sorry. You see, even this you watch, <laughs> what is playing like that. So somebody remind her, because I also forget. <laughs> 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 if you keep on forgetting things, then try forgetting everything. <laughs> Don't try and turn back and swim upstream. Forget everything, including your own idea of yourself. Why don't we try it? It's a very good one. Just don't hold on to anything right now for a moment. Just don't hold on to any shape, like you know, later this and you know, I want to ask this question, or especially questions right now. Because you know what happened? If you're holding on to a question, you're not hearing what I'm speaking. You're just waiting for the opportunity to ask your question. This is mind. And so why let's let be free of it just for a few seconds. Let's let everything go then. Don't hold on to any shape, no desire, no wish, not even for enlightenment or nothing. Just let everything go. Be totally empty. Like somehow we found we found a, a hole in your heel and we take it out and everything has leaked out. Including your identity from it. Let's try now. Don't be a container. You're not a container for a moment, just for a moment. I promise you you can go go back. To contain the whole world, if you want, but just don't hold on to anything for a moment. <clears throat> nothing to save, nothing to keep, nothing to remember, nothing to develop, nothing to heal, nothing to change, nothing to become. Nothing to remember. How possible is it? Nothing, nothing, nothing. And nobody doing it also. (coughs) Nothing to think about. Nothing to meditate upon. Is it good? Okay, okay. Don't come back. Don't come back. Right? Just be where you are, okay? Let me ask you a question now. If you're with me, is this an unnatural state? Don't think about it too much. What really is here? 
You can f- suppose we can forget everything, everything, everything you've learned, everything you think you should do, do about the future, you should, just for a moment. Suppose the Lord Himself came and said, "Darling, just forget about all this for a moment. Just spend a moment with me. Leave everything for me." Everything is left aside. But something remains that cannot be left aside. It cannot be taken out. It doesn't require anyone to remember it or forget it. You are in the direct experience of that now. No development, no technique, no skill required. Boom. What is here now? And as it freshly arrived, does it have a date on it? And this is what I want to ask. Did you produce this? Does it need help? Let me ask you something. All the things I asked you to leave aside, are they waiting for you? I'm asking everybody here. If I say, don't touch these things for a minute, don't all your all your your to-do list, okay? Don't touch anything. All your self-identifications, all these things, just don't touch them for a few moments. Just while we, just until I'm going to say stop in a moment. You can go back and pick up your stuff. Is anything fundamentally missing from you? Is life being impatient with you? Is life apart from you? What is life then? Right now, in your place of business. What is life? A story? Is life a story? Can life carry on in this? Can life go on like this? Are you the are you the one behind cranking up the life every day? No. What is life? You see? This is simple, simple thing. You know what you are seeing and experiencing? Your true nature. Your true nature. Are you mummy or daddy here? <laughs> Uncle? Hmm? Employer, employee? Are you unworthy here? Or worthy? No, <laughs> you, you, are, you are just here like this. Is it unbearable? Do you have to keep it up? So I can carry on like this? Okay. <laughs> hmm? What does the mind have to say? Where is mine, by the way? Inside or outside? Where is mine at the moment? You always have a, a thing or two to say. <laughs> you wait. I'll be outside waiting for you. What? Is 
So any time you like, you can go and pick up your stuff. I promise you, nobody is going to steal it. Now, I want to ask you one more question. Is this just a momentary hit, a feel-good moment? I hope your camera catches all the people who says no. <laughs> See what they're going to say later. You know? <laughs> that was then, Muji. Not now. That was past. Can this pass? Are you answering from memory or from. I don't think what you should say will be important if you heard what I say. Why would this not be enough? Why you have to add something more to this then? Unless your mind is saving up something. So if your mind is saving something, you have not heard what I said. Sometimes somebody come and say, "Muji, I have two questions." I said, mm, "You have to make it one, because while I'm answering your first question, you're trying to remember your second question, and you'll miss both." So don't keep any shopping basket in your head of questions and things to do. You're better off just being empty. But something doesn't trust it. You think you need some, some, uh, what you some skills for life. Don't trust your own consciousness. We think we need some techniques. You need to know how to, some how to do things. Do you have the power to just leave that there? Okay, go on. Let me hear what you have to say. Yeah. It just feels that, like right now, there's. I'm just not sure if I'm really if it's dropped. Because it feels this identity around the thinker of thought is just so close, even after invitation or now, and I just feel to bring this to you because it's been going on, and it's yet. Uh, Suppose I ask you to go and put this thing down on this chair here. You take <laughs> it, and, uh, and then I say you did it, and you say I'm not sure if I really did it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I really did it. <laughs> I said, did what? I said, put the thing on this chair over there. Or just give this thing to this lady there in the blue sweatshirt. Yes, I, I'm not really sure I really did it. Why should you not be sure? You know, what it means that you really drop something? What do you mean you drop it? It means that you leave it. Suppose I put this thing down, and then I turn around, the thing come and climb on me and hold on to me. <laughs> did I fail? No, I didn't. I put it, I'll take it and put it back down. I start to walk out, and I see it's in my pocket. I say, what, what's going on? Put it down. Watch it. And I start to walk away, walk away, walk away. Good. I turn around. It's on my shoulder. Then you can say, yes, actually, I'm not sure if I succeeded at it, Guruji. But I said, did I? Did you? Did you follow my instruction? Yes, I did. What did you do? I put it down. Did I say anything else after that? No. But it jumped back on my back. And then what happened? Then I put it down again. Is there something else I'm supposed to have done? I said, I said I'll leave it. But it keeps coming back. And then just leave it. 
Yeah, but if I put it down there. No, I just said, leave it. So if he comes up on there, Muji said, leave it. So just leave it. Now it's on my head. But Muji said, just leave it. That's what leaving it means. Just leave it. Don't be concerned about how it's looking. Now it's growing. I said, leave it. But you said, leave it there. I said, just leave it there and leave it everywhere. <laughs> it's possible or not? Leave it means to disassociate. Supposing you were going someplace and I say, oh, there's, a, there's a room full of people coming down from Shiva Hill, coming down. And I say, these people are going to come and hug you. But my instruction to you is, you don't hug anybody. You don't hug anybody. They all come and go, hi, and but you just, uh, and they hug you and they kiss your head and they hug and they hug. But you are just surrendered. You are not hugging anybody. And then somebody come and look in the eyes, you know, <laughs> like really begging for a hug. And you go, okay then. You know, then you have not done it. Is it possible a hundred people can come and hug you, but you don't hug anyone? Yeah, you can. You have to sometimes leave uh, some things like that. But uh, we say we leave them, but they're still there because something is interested in it. That's also a very powerful advice, also and guidance. If you are not interested, you cannot be troubled by something you have no interest in. You don't have to overcome something that has no importance for you. The need for overcoming doesn't exist. You must overcome something that has some interest for you, as some means something. Then you say, no, I want to get over this attraction for this thing, and then like this. Then if the attraction is there, then how you overcome the attraction, then you see. Then you must watch. Then you must watch. Here, here is inquiry, then you must watch. You see how to overcome this attraction, then you must find out, what is it that is attracted to what? What is it that is here that you have been shown? You see, Is it only a person? If it is only a person, then I will give you a very big job to overcome something, because it will not be easy. It is very difficult to overcome something personally. You can only overcome it impersonally. Because the person has the attachment you see, to the thing it wants to overcome, but it has to overcome the attachment. The thing is just the thing. You see, but we think you're going to overcome this. I got to climb over this. No, no. You must watch. What is it that is so attracted to this? And when you observe that it's a tendency, it's some kind of habit, and then you keep. You never lose sight of the that which observes. Is that which observes? Entangled in the thing it's observing. Observe that. Is it too many words there? Because then sometimes, when you are when you are making use of something that's very powerful, a lot of force of destruction is going to come. In this life, in this human body, hmm? the consciousness which is so powerful, perhaps more powerful than inside any other species on this planet. In the human form, the capacity of consciousness is potentially very, very high, because we know that inside the human kingdom, uh, the consciousness is able to contemplate itself. This is very, very high expression of consciousness. But from the very human personal standpoint, we get entangled very easy. We pick up that identity. It's like velcro for thoughts. And so something is very much like this. You have to move into deeper space, less personal space, and then you find, I am uncaught. Even this thought may not even be there. That neither the idea of being trapped or free is there. Do you know this place? Yes. Are you a visitor there? Yes. Are you resident there? <laughs> Yes. 
is it a is it a is it a what they call it a, an air raid shelter meaning that when the bombs of the mine are dropping you run and uh, when they stop you come out and look you come out is it like that because sometimes it can feel like that when we feel under attack then you run you know under the blanket of god look out look out means what going back to trouble that looks like peace but when you're in the blanket of god you feel ah oh, i came here to escape and i find myself okay thank you <clears throat> are we feeling empty or full or noisy or oh, beautiful oh no, 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 that's not a new one beautiful <laughs> Maybe I'll just read something, I don't know, from what you want, from uh, Ashtavakra, Ribu. Where about Avaduta? Avaduta. You want Avad- Ashtavakra or Avaduta? Those of you who know, who don't know. Avaduta, okay. Say stop. Okay. Oh, it's a marked page, I don't know if that's really. <laughs> Come again. Oh, together. Oh, we are one. Okay. Hmm. I am beyond non-existence and beyond existence. These do not pertain to me. I am beyond both union and separation. These don't pertain to me. I am beyond unconsciousness and consciousness. These don't pertain to me. I am nectarian knowledge, unchanging bliss. I am everywhere, like space. I am never swayed by attraction. I am never swayed by attraction or repulsion. I never even imagined these. I am never swayed by happiness or grief. I never imagined these. I am never swayed by passion or dispassion. I never imagined this. I am nectarian knowledge, unchanging bliss. I am everywhere, like space. A little bit more? Yes. Sure, you are more on that one. The clinging vine of worldly existence cannot affect me at all. The sage is saying like this. When the sage speaks, he is not speaking personally. He is speaking universally. So he is speaking on behalf of all of us. He is speaking the thing we are not able to speak at the moment. But we are. And he is speaking it for you, for all of us. Contentment and pleasures, however many, cannot affect me at all. The bondage of ignorance, this world of appearance cannot affect me at all. I am nectarian knowledge. Nectarian means what? Like the nectar of knowledge, unchanging bliss. I am everywhere, like space. Neither troubles, nor sorrow, nor pleasures have any effect on my intellect. Nor can the difficulties attending yoga have any effect on my mind. Whatever may happen to stir up the ego cannot affect me at all. I am nectarian knowledge, unchanging bliss. I am everywhere, like space. What is he referring to? Hmm? 
but I, I am nectarian knowledge, unchanging bliss. I am everywhere, like space. Is it a person? That in which even the sense of the person is seen. The world that appears through the senses and the mind is seen, but it remains untouched. Body come, body live, body go. But it is beyond age. It is neither young nor old. No need to imagine. Imagination cannot capture him. Imagination and its intention is also observed from here. Imagination can give nothing to him, nor take anything away. In the very core of your being dwells he, the Supreme Self. The seeker searching for him loses himself in the discovery and realizes, I am this. What time is it there, wherever it is? What time is it? What season? (coughs) What level of heaven? How far are we? Are we near or far? Again, how close or how far, how distant are we from the infinite? Ooh, tricky. How far from the limitless one? Mind still functioning? Or is mind become impotent for responding to such questions? Sometimes we are too accustomed to language and to speaking, so the intellect is presented as the as the knower. But that is there before even the play of the intellect. Even before you say, I am, the voiceless I am is there. So be in that. Thereafter, speaking will come spontaneously, even even, uh, involuntarily, you might find you speak. And you will become a fresh listener to your own words also. Often it will come like that, because the timing is God's timing. Some somehow you are expressing, and there is a freshness to it. It is not some saved up knowledge that you have had. And even though you may have said something that may have been said before, again, every time it is fresh. And then even when you speak, even though your words might sound dualistic, the power of them is unifying, you see? But it comes organically even without intention, just through your openness it comes. Very good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you.
May you walk in the light In the presence of the Lord Walk in the light In the presence of the Lord Oh, may it be so Oh, oh let it be so Stand up and say, this life's for freedom. Stand up and say, this life's for freedom. Wisdom and joy and happiness. Wisdom and joy and happiness. Oh, let it be so. Oh, let it be so. Love is a fragrance. We all know it's true. Love is a fragrance, we all know it's true.
beloved one A silent song Here with you This heart belongs Tis a joy Brought these eyes to see The heart that sings with yours Is a heart that's free Beloved one Silence is speaking, beloved one. 